The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour for the 16th of July. Really important session as I'm as far as I'm concerned. Yesterday I said it was last week I said it was going to be a very important week for a number of the indices to see whether the trends can continue, whether they change. We actually went to new highs in most of the indices, not all, most of the indices touched a new high in the Dow today, all-time high. We're going to be going about this. This is a lesson. In the Chapman Wave methodology, what we're always looking for is the, this particular series of, of uh, configurations. We try to identify the lowest low bar and merely count each successively high to get to the fourth highest peak, alphabetizing them, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. But it's on the way up that the, the, it's much more meaningful in terms of notation. On the way down, we look at patterns and we look at the MACD and stochastic. So it's slightly different. But look at this, at peak D, other things can happen. It can even go to E, F, and G, but D is where you raise your foot of the accelerator, let it cruise for just a moment to see whether or not there's action enough to continue in a buy mode, just to make one little peak and then pull back, or you've recycled high, or this is the deepest consolidation. You'll see how many times that happens at D. There are only three patterns, straight up, straight down, that's this line right here, and an arch, and a curve. And what happens, you go from one level, rally, come back, retest it. How you retest it is important. You go from one level down and come back to retest the upper level. How you break out or break down is important. And then, so you can say three distinct chart formations, but you can also mix them, but it's still three patterns. And here it's a mix. And the red one shows when you come down, you make an arch formation, retest the low and take it out in a particular way with weak technicals. Woohoo! You can go much lower. And on the upside, when you bounce and you try to take out the top part, if you fail, that's one thing. If you take it out decisively, it's very positive. So three patterns, straight up, straight down, arch or cup. How does that apply to real life? This is how it applies to real life. Look at uh, Microsoft. Unbelievable uh, a cup formation. And then it just breaks out massively. Look at this huge cup. And it goes back to the, the high that was made. Let me show you, I'll squeeze this in and you're gonna look at this, look at this. That's the high of 2000, 53.97 actually was split, but it's a peak D, Tr runs all the way down to 14.87, 2009. I would say that's a pretty a bit of a, uh, what, 86% or something decline. And then it comes back, takes out in the Chapman Wave Cup and Ladle formation, takes out that left side high, comes right through it, and what do we see? We see that, yes, right here. So this is a leg G slash C, because that's that alternate count. There's your D with the Chapman Wave instant restart at that peak D where it recycles higher. Now we've gone to a G slash C with a doji candle with the MACD and stochastic still very good. Hey, hey, hey. You've gone to a leg F in the weekly chart, and with the MACD good, and very good, and the stochastic very good at 91%. On balance volume, this little red one right here is pulling back a little bit, and the on balance volume is still very good. Wait a minute, we were right here. I was looking at this the other day and thinking, you know, I, for ages I've been saying, buy Microsoft. We haven't bought Microsoft. We've got others that have done fantastically, but Microsoft uh, just kept going high. And then the other day I looked at it, I said, this is going to be a test in the Chapman Wave methodology. Are we going to get a peak D at an all-time high in Microsoft? Well, on the uh, 11th of July, it goes to one, th uh, what is that, one, if I can actually see it, 139.22. The next high is 139.13. Uh, that uh, nine cents makes a difference because it makes a peak C. And then lo and behold, yesterday we go to 139.54. Let me just put that in because I think it's going to be significant. 139.54. And at 139.54, today's gap, well, it opened kind of at, at the close yesterday, the same price, and then gaps down. And now in one foul move, we've gone 
to just under the 14, the black line, the 14 period moving average, which we've only tested successfully a few times. And if we break below it, it'll be the first close since we broke above it back around about June the 5th or so. Isn't that amazing? So you got your peak D in Microsoft with very poor technicals in the MACD. Stochastic's still good at 87%, but it's hinting that there could be further decline to go, that we could be testing the 133 uh, to 132 level over the next two weeks. And here's a leg F. Here we go. Let me go through these things. So I just wanted to show that. And you're talking about cup formation, talking about V-shaped formation. It's the same as a, as a cup. And a breakout to the upside here from the 93.36 low of December. Not bad. Up, a, up 40 points to 139.54 uh, over, over, over that. And, um, hey, you can have a little digestive phase right now. Uh, let me show you something else. In the Dow, I'll just show you this because it's all the techniques that I talk about for my opening call subscribers. Back a day before, at the alternate count, G slash C, around about the 22nd, no, I think it was 21st of April, um, I was looking at that, we made a peak C, and then a G slash C, and I said, it doesn't matter if we go one, one peak higher, that's okay, because at G slash C, you can often go just to the D, and then you've got to be careful. So we went short at about 26,580. The high was 26,695 um, on the 23rd at peak D. Plunges down and goes to 24,701. On the way down, we were covering the sh most of our shorts, and then we went 200% longer position. That was conviction. The day of the June 3rd low. At 24,701, that was the low. We went long at about 24,820. Well, I'm not, not sure the exact number because we were long a different instrument in the Dow. And it goes to peak A, peak B, peak C. We took a little bit off right there, that peak C around about 26,960s. But I held and I said, we're not doing anything because we want to see what happens in this leg D. The MACD, the moving average convergence divergence is good. The slow stochastic at 96%, that's good. So we had a plan, and the plan was two, twofold. Plan was to do one thing if the Dow did a certain action, or to do something else if the Dow did another action. So the action that I was hoping would be the one because it would be doing it right in the 27,390s uh, <clears throat> is the action that we've just done, not changing at all our long position. It's just, it's just a way of, of, it's a trading position. And now we're down at 27,312. So this has to do with the waveform. It has to do with the technique as it applies to the waveform. It has to do with what I can do for subscribers to be able to articulate what and why we're doing it. But there's another factor that I absolutely want to keep in mind. Look at the weekly chart of the um, Dow with the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, making this M-shaped pattern and so strong. Look at the green line, the nine period differential, and look at the red line. The, um, the uh, this is the, uh, sorry, this is a 26 period exponential moving average. Look at that distance. And look at the stochastic at 95%. I didn't want to get too clever here. I think there's still an intense buying uh, uh, format that's going on amongst fund managers. I'll talk if you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. So uh, let's just go to the S&P, do it a little bit in more detail. Uh, S&P coming up right now. S&P is down about, who accelerated down, down 12. S&P is now down 60, uh, Dow's down 62. Ooh, that's, that's, uh, here's your peak F at 3,015.0, oh, oh, sorry, 3,017, I think I said it was. Did I type that in? No. 3,017.80, let me just change that. 3,017.80. And uh, the MACD has not yet crossed negative. Stochastic still 95% in the daily. 96% in the weekly, and the MACD is still good. And the monthly just crossed positive, but this is halfway through the month. We can't talk about it as if it's a done deal. So this is very interesting. Is this a leg E in the weekly chart? Is this a leg F in the daily chart? Is this only a new, brand new leg A in the, uh, in the monthly? And so far, everything says, yeah, that's what it is. Looks like an F, acts like an F. After a peak F, the bar or the next bar after F is usually a very sharp, big red candle. But you need the MACD to turn down. I can't even put a sell signal notation here. I can just put a little red plus sign. If it closes under 29.78 in the next uh, few days, by Friday maybe, then I'm going to put a down arrow and say sell signal, probably sell mode, but first a sell signal. Nothing at all in the weekly chart. Not a single thing. So let's go one step at a time. Uh, a breakout to new highs is just very positive. QQQ, one, two, three. QQQ, this is the Invesco QQQ Trust Series trading up. Same thing. 194.19 yesterday. The high today is 194.09. Uh, it was a 10, 10 cents lower. And it has a characteristic of the candle of a leg F, but the day's young. Anything can happen. But I am looking at the MACD starting to, to not turn across negative, but turn down. Stochastic still very strong at 95%. Same thing in the weekly charts. So I, I'm calling this a just a little digestive phase. We're going to have to see if it accelerates further. Now I need to go to the um, IWM just to show you something. IWM is just... Now it's down, it was up a little bit when I gave the update at noon. Now it's down 14 cents at 155.50.
Now, this is going to be important. Look at the, remember, I've been spending a lot of time in the IA, which my subscribers are long. It's a very light volume thing. It's gone to a leg E, skyrocketed into the 66.29 area from just the other day, was in the 63.64s. That to me is really important. But at the same time, I'm kind of nervous that this is telling me that it's a little bit belated. A look at the iShares broker dealer ETF just on the shorter term, um, kind of looking at the picture right here over the next couple of weeks 94 in the stochastic uh magd is very strong i want to see how this thing uh, thing uh, unfolds yep I, I will do that i was asked if i could show it with those moving averages again look so this is um the, this is the iai coming up so you see all these automated resistance points look at that it just it broke right through that it held it and then boom each one it stopped dead in its tracks and then it broke out there is, it didn't stop dead in its tracks. It went right through at the 65.91. Today's high is 65, <clears throat> excuse me, 66.29. 66.59 is the next one. This is a very important moment, and these become support levels. So the whole thing about the 65.02 of the nine period green, a nine period moving average, that could be a containment area. Look, to get the last time that this broke down and you had the MACD, sorry, I called it the MACD, but it's, it's like a MACD, but it's not. It's the nine period moving average under the 14 period. You can use any ones you want. This is just, I kind of prefer. Um, it took all the way from around about the 64.30 area to go down to the 61.80. What was this low right here? 61.49. And then it took time to break and go lower. So that's why I'm saying I'm not going to get too carried away with it, with, it, with it calling a top right here. I think to say just. For subscribers who are interested in trading, we had a plan. We've got a plan. We've tried to work the plan. We'll see if that works out. Now, the other thing that's important is if you look at the IYT, which is the um, trans... Where did that go? Oh, wrong one. IYT. Let me just click on this chart. So it goes to this chart. There you are. IYT. This is the, in, this is the iShares Transportation Index. Spiked up in a leg F. 191.68, 191.68. Yep, this is leg F, and uh, it went higher than that. It went to today's high of 195. Wow, 0.65. Let me just type that in. So we've got a reference point here, 5.65. That's I make it great because we don't know if this is done. It's just uh, an indication of today's high. So this is nice action. You've got the transports finally moving on. The XAL must be up surely. XA. Where did that go? Oh, I typed it onto the chart. Don't do that. There we go. Oh, this is the ARCA airline index trading up a dollar eighty nine, one eight, one eight point thirty two in a leg C. So this is still very positive. MACD and stochastic are nice up. This is the weekly chart. Also, everything's up. This is very good action. And that's another reason why I want you to see if the IYT was going to stay lagging or continue higher. That was very important. So, um, okay, over in that area, I wanted to show you a couple, one more thing. Um, yes, I was asked about again about that PLD. What happened with it, with the takeover talks? Well, this is Pro Prologis Inc. REIT Industrial having a great day up 99 cents at 80.93. I did not want to do anything. We're, we're in, we've taken profits all the way up from the 75 area at 80 and 82 and 83. I just didn't want to do anything. I said, keep at least a half of the original position. And uh, let's see what happens here. This is a peak A in the weekly chart. If there's no new high above 83.99, but they're taking over the competitor. I don't know if that's going to be a good or a bad position, but we, so far I don't have the technicals to say, get out of this. So that was the one question. Another question I had was, um, yeah, so we do have a broker that's doing very nice. It's up almost 3% today. And uh, that was also, we, we along that plus the IAI. Um, you know, we don't have that many positions, but we, we're really working very hard uh, to be able to uh, maintain these positions, add to them or take off whatever it needs to be. And today we did add one more long this is a little bit of a gamble because I like the stock. I've liked it before, but I only want it on a pullback. It's given us that pullback, and it's not a very high-priced one at about uh, uh, $38.
um, it's reasonably priced. I, you know, you, we, you could have a 300, 400, 500. I just, I'd like to get, if you, if you get everything in a lower price stock, why not go for the lower price stock if it has the same chart pattern as a more expensive one? That's not just I don't like the more expensive one. I just try to be a little more practical for subscribers. Now, the next thing I want to look at is, yeah, so the question about gold. What about the, the, the mix of gold and silver? Well, you remember what I said? I've heard stories all the way across the board since uh, last week that gold is going to, uh, you, name the, you name the upside. Oh, gold is done. Who needs gold in this particular environment, even with rates low? Uh, and then they name the downside. I, you know, I'm in the camp that says chart patterns repeat over and over again. This flagpole with the rectangle formation says you can stay in a sideways range for a lot longer than your patience. That doesn't mean to say individual gold stocks don't move well, but I just think gold is stuck. It's down four. But look at silver, how they rotate through these things. Silver had a really nice breakout into leg D. Does it start to come back to the 200 period, moving up 1537? We'll see soon enough. I'll be back. Dow's down 38. I'll be right back. Basil Chap for Tiger Two Missions Hour. And since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Dow's down 45, SB's down 15. No, 10. And uh, what we're looking at here is the silver is uh, up 24 cents at 15.16. Nice breakout here. And what's really important, it was looking two weeks ago, it was looking lousy. It really was. And the monthly chart was looking lousy. Now the weekly chart's improving because the technicals are starting to rally. 
and the MACD and stochastic in the uh, monthly chart are actually higher now than they were before, and that is a good sign. Now, does that mean that gold and silver are going to fly to the moon? And um, what we're really looking at here is the chance that within the context of what's happening now, silver has played catch up and maybe in leg D, it starts, it's done this before. Look at the peak D in the weekly chart when it ran all that way higher uh, back on the February, the week of this, February the 22nd, it went to 16.45. So it has done this before. Don't be fooled by silver. I think that right now this looks to me more like catch up, not catch up, catch up, but I mean a catch up to the gold. And we'll see if it lasts. And if you are long, that's, that's great. I would just say, 15.37 is the 200 period moving average. A close below that says, oh, it's all over for now. It's going to go sideways for a little bit longer. All right. Uh, we are looking at the dollar. This is a really nice move in the dollar. Look at that. Oh, at the highs. 97.36 up 0.43. Isn't that amazing how the dollar has held so beautifully? And that weekly chart um, has led so far to an improvement in the MACD, not great, but an improvement. But the stochastic has started to rally. And all of a sudden, the monthly chart, that 14 period moving average, the black line, has been like a, a springboard for a move up. And that nine period moving average, green of 94.62, uh, it shoop, went right through it. 94, 96, sorry, 96.42. And I think we were going to a leg D in the, you know, in the summer. And that'll be very important over 98.37. And it could still chop around. This is just a day, one day's move. So I think it's too carried away. E-U-R-U-S-D. It's a euro currency, par uh, um, currency pair. Look at this H pattern. Remember, what did I say? You can mix the two patterns, and it can come down. There's the red one. The lowercase h. Break that left side low decisively. Not a good picture. So uh, let's watch this closely for the euro. I told you the weekly looks lousy, and the monthly looks what's worse than lousy. Terrible. Okay, uh, let's look at uh, can you, 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 USD, JPY, Euro dollar currency pair. And what do we have? We have uh, trading up, I think. Yep, up 31 cents, but it hasn't got to a leg D. I think it will get to a leg D, and that'll be above 109, uh, 108.99, and that'll start you going into a leg D. And we did that in crude oil, remember? It looked impossible to do when I was on with Tommy O'Brien Jr. last week this time. Um, we were looking at crude oil was today or the Wednesday. And I said, uh uh, this is, should go to a leg D in the cup formation. Lo and behold, it goes to a D at continuous contract 68. Sorry, 68. Someone's fallen off their chair. 60.94. Let me just type that in so I don't make that error again. 60.94. In the continuous contract trading right now 59.33 no big deal but it's going back into the rectangle formation as far as i can see so that's very really important okay just color this in for now got it okay so we want to look at okay, a couple of stocks now um let me just do this to show you why certain things in my opinion are happening my cash index syntax Test Corporation uh, trading right now at 242.96, made an all-time high of 244.59, G slash C, still extremely strong, but the MACD is just okay, and the stochastic is very good at 94% in the daily. The, the weekly chart, MACD is strong, and the stochastic is at 97.36. I mean, you, you don't get much higher than the 97s, maybe 98s. I, I, I've seen once a 99. Um, so, and that wasn't a truck 99, and it wasn't, uh, what is, what was the thing we used to have around here? A restaurant called the 99? All right, Sintas Corporation overalls uniform rentals. This is telling us that at least for now, even though it's a late bloomer, because it, it, obviously it, if companies are doing real well, they're going to keep buying what they need right up until it turns down, the market turns down, and then you'll see this. Um, fading. But right now it's saying things are good. Amazon. Amazon Prime today's the second day. I, I never do Amazon Prime. I probably should. But I, I don't do much buying. Um, 2010, right now down 11 points. It's just stuck in a range. I'm going to do this here. A little mini uh, a rectangle formation says, yeah, you might pop out once above that, 
chances are you're going to be coming back down after going to almost the all-time high, a little uh, retracement from 2026. 20, the high last week was 2030-something, wasn't it? Yeah, 2035.80, and the all-time high is 20.50. And, uh, yeah, we've got Amazon taking a bit of a breather, deserves it, and a uh, nice leg up. I think this is leg B in the month here. I think it's going much higher over the next uh, many months. So that's Amazon trading at 2011 down 10, and uh, it needs to hold 1988 to 1968 over the next two and a half to three weeks. Otherwise, it's got a problem. Next thing I want you to look at is SPY, which is the S&P depository receipts. Makes an all-time high yesterday. What did I say? It was 302, wasn't it? 301.13. Let me just type that in. 301.13 over the round number high from the other day. I think this is a topping area, but it could be just short-term because the MAC news stochastic is still, it's going to be bad news, it does it. And so far, the news, I mean, even the earnings today, well, we know even the, that was earnings on Goldman Sachs, we'll look at that in a moment. Yep, I've got questions about it. Um, but more importantly, that's right, it was some kind of a wage report I heard on the radio, um, and uh, they were talking about even the lower paying jobs is really starting to uh, improve, and that's really good. So how does this uh, resolve? It, can, it might just go into the 295 area, uh, four points, 400 points, maybe in the Dow. I, I'm, I'm looking, that's not, a, I wouldn't say worst case, but that's probably the more serious case. But actually what I am looking at is how, do, is there a new high over the next two days or do we drop a little bit further? And then we're going to get a sense of whether the MACD is telling us this is more serious or not. And then H is Home Depot. Home Depot is trading uh, down $1.20 at 217.50. Yesterday makes a leg D. Looks like today could well be a peak D. And look at this in the weekly charts at 219.30, 219.30. And what do we have? We have a leg D, probably a peak D today in the week, in the daily. Weekly is a leg C in the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. And this huge circle here says, brand new all-time highs this month. Fabulous action in Home Depot. Uh, maybe it's just a little overbought. Okay, now that's much more important than if I look at Caterpillar, which is having an eye. There's your D, same as Microsoft, just couldn't resist. Goes to a D. Let's see if the weekly chart at some point will go to a D. But the daily has, and now you can have a little bit of a, a, a digestive phase. So Caterpillar... IBM, I still don't know why I still keep IBM. It's just habit, I guess. Uh, in a leg, could have recycled. G slash C, that's all I'm calling it, and that'll be very clear. G slash C, and we haven't gone to a leg D in the 145s. So maybe there's a little more room, but I think that that's telling us something. And look at this, Triple M had a very nice uh, earlier start, as well as UTEX. I'll be back and we'll talk about my Dow Quartet in a moment. Dow's down to 35.25. I'll be right back. That's the Chapman Tiger. Get to this one. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South 
African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So, uh, AZO is a question, and then AZO and Orly. AutoZone, Inc., uh, car truck parts at all time highs right here, 1,100. 1, I haven't looked at it for a little while. 1,182.7 um, was the high. It's trading down just uh, four points uh, below it, four and a half points. Yeah, I think this is, I, I, I'll go through this again, but I think this is a new leg B to the upside. Woohoo! Um, that is incredible. Let me just double check here. Yeah. 9182, 10. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yes, it isn't ready yet for a major collapse because only a leg C in the monthly chart, leg E in the uh, weekly. So, this could, in fact, have some kind of a digestive phase. Maybe it has about another week to go. Um, a Orly is O'Reilly. I had this all notated. I can't remember. Was it, a it was AZO. We once had a spectacular move. We bought, we shorted uh, ASIO and it was the day before the earnings report and then it just collapsed. It was like an 80 point, uh, 80 point move or something. It was amazing. Uh, a, B, C, D, E, F, and there's a strong move. And that, that could be a recycle, Chapman Wave, instant restart right there. Whoa, this is strong. This is strong. Yes, you can have a bit of a pullback, but this is still very strong. Um, Orly at 4.04, up 0.93. So a question I had about Boeing. Yep, Boeing is trading at, uh, was that down a little bit earlier on? No, now it's up 250. Nice action, helping the Dow a little bit. Uh, Boeing at 364, up 253. It's just stuck in a range. Now, here comes the big question. Goldman Sachs. Goldman's up four. It uh, was up four. Oh, now it's only up a dollar ninety-five. Now it's up two. Going once, going twice. Two oh six. Anybody got me at two thirty? No, nope, two thirty. One ninety-eight. Anybody one ninety-nine? One two hundred four. All right. So two hundred thirteen point sixty-four in leg D after earnings were actually. I thought I read somewhere uh, where I saw it go by that said uh, the earnings were surprisingly good. All right. Leg E in the uh, weekly chart and only a leg C in the monthly. I'd said to both subscribers and actually here and in interviews that if at any point Goldman starts to trade in the 222 area, I think that would be a breakout. That would be a harbinger of much higher prices to come this year. But it went to the 217 area. That's pretty good. Five points you can do in a blink of an eye. But so far, that's what it did. It's giving some of that back. This is good. I like that it's in play. It's moving out of its resistance to here in the monthly chart. Right here, but the only one that went to a peak C, and I can. There's no other count for it, so it went to a peak C failure because it went to a lower low. I haven't seen that in monthly charts. I just I, I don't remember seeing it. 
Uh, it just happened. I just don't remember offhand. So it's broken out. This is a good action. Now I can have a bit of a digestive phase. The question I had was, would I look at the, uh, what was it? Oh, the BKX index. BKX. This is the Keith Brewitt Bank Index. Right. There it is. KBW Bank Index. Down 75 cents. Having made a peak. D, another one of those Ds. I haven't got a down arrow yet, but I could by the end of the day. So the XLF is really the one that's easier for you to get. XLF is a symbol. It's the same thing. And you can see right here, it's gone to peak E in the uh, in the daily chart. It's pulling back a little bit. A D, a leg D in the weekly chart. Technicals are still pretty good. I, I still like this area, the financials. I think they're going to overall, as a mix, I think they're going to hold up pretty well. Now, uh, one of the things that I am looking at here is uh, within the XLF, what about uh, Visa, which has had a spectacular run? Well, Visa made a peak E three days ago and it's had slightly lower highs. It went to uh, 183.95. Let me just type that in, 183.95. Okay. And... What we're really looking at here is just a little high-level consolidation. But the MACD is turning down a bit, but hasn't crossed negative. And the stochastic is steady at 92%, but is pulling back with on-balance volume and the relative strength index. Leg D in the weekly chart. A lot of this just says to me, be ready for some kind of a consolidation. It doesn't have to be a major catastrophe down to the... But it could just be some kind of a consolidation after a spectacular move. Even if they're just those waves that didn't see the sign, the rogue waves, they didn't see the sign high tide at noon, and at 12.06, whoosh, they come all the way up the beach and wet everybody, and then you look around, the tide's going way out. That's kind of what I'm thinking here is that we've got some kind of a digestive phase about to unfold. May, might have begun already. And I had a question about oh, earlier on. Uh, let me just see the UUU. I said I'd get back to that today. Oh, nice spike to the upside. Giving some of it back. Oh, man, I bet this is the one that's moved and not the other one. UEC. Yeah, isn't that interesting? You never know. I said to uh, um, to uh, the uh, the questioner about UUU and UEC, I said, I think I like UU, UEC better because it was acting well. It didn't go. Even today it's acting better because it didn't go into the wick of that horrible, ugly candle from the dollar forty three. I think it was down to 91. Announced at 1.11. But let me go back to you, you, you. Um, you, you. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Okay. Phew. What was I looking at? Let me look at that chart because that was quite interesting. Oh, it was three U's. Okay. So four U's. No, I, I, I still stand exactly what I said before. Don't get too involved with both of them, but pick one. And I thought my, I thought that the one that I chose, the um, UEC was better. This is Energy Fuels Inc. and the UUU, sorry, UEC is uh, Uranium Energy Core. They're both uranium. I, this is one that I seem to have a little bit better, better chart. Okay, um, that was a that was a shocker. Uh, let's see uh, questions I had over the over the weekend that I never got to. Oh yes, we don't look at those stocks like a work day. Uh, let me. I haven't looked at this for a little while. Work days in leg A. B, C. So we've got an A, then we've got a B, and a C. So will it keep going up like this in a, in a stair step move? Big spike, then it gives a chunk back. Big spike to another new recovery high, <clears throat> and then it gives it back. Yeah, there's the Chapman Wave Inside Channel. If it is going to rally from 214 right now down 384, um, Got a lot of resistance to the 228, 229 area. Okay. Yes. Okay. So now the other thing I had a question about was the workday. Uh, oh, ZM, Zoom. ZM is trading at 97.92. It made a peak F in the chart wave at 107.34 on the 20th of June. Pulled back to the 84s, trading right now at 97, making a potential U formation. Uh, U formation. There it is. Your uh, formation sounds like from the book, one word book, the givers, two words, the givers, right? Um, oh, he's involved with the euphonation. There we go. Big U, big B. 
There, peak C. This is a leg C right now. It could become a peak C. So it's having a U formation. And that's going to be very interesting. So, um, yep, we've got, a, we've got the bell ringing right now. We've got the final break before I, I end the show. So let's get this break over with so I can go to some of the things I just got some emails about. I'll get to them in a moment. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, the author of the opening call, Daily Newsletter, very comprehensive newsletter that has some very nice positions. <clears throat> let's see what happens now. And I'll be back, dials down, just for a I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. Don't forget, Steve comes up. Then comes uh, Dave White, Tom O'Brien. I'll be on <coughs> with Tom uh, the first part of the show uh, this afternoon. So we've got Zoom trading at 97.93, down to 87. Leg C, got a cup formation. I wouldn't be surprised if the 97.30 to 96.80, if it actually gets the holes, and it just tries to go to a leg D. Whether it goes all the way back to 107 is going to be the issue. But the MACD did turn up, so this is a good chance over the weeks. I think we will get a leg C above 107.34 in the weekly chart. And it might take a little while. And that will start. This is a leg B. If it's this month, it will extend B. If it's next month, it will start a leg C in the monthly. I do think this is in play for the long side. It's just getting in. And, and it's very whippy now. Hasn't filled the gap. That was the gap from uh, earlier in June, uh, from about 80 <clears throat> all the way to 90. It's a huge gap, news-related gap. So that's always a bit of a problem for me. <clears throat> How do you fill it? Do you fill it? And what do you do afterwards? Okay, <clears throat> that was what I'm looking at. For the Dow, to actually turn down significantly, it's got at least 
to go under 27,000, probably 26,800 <clears throat> for it to be a, not, it was just there a week ago. So it has to be holding underneath that level, holding even under the 14-period uh, <clears throat> moving average over a period of days, that's at 26,942, to have a significant effect in negating the strength in the technicals. So my thinking here is that we're going to be choppy for the next uh, three to seven sessions, and that choppiness could maybe go to a slightly higher high. I think there's a lot of resistance slightly higher. So we can go there and then come back down and then go back up and then go. So chop, chop, chop sideways. That's kind of what I'm looking at with maybe overall slightly lower highs and slightly uh, lower lows, maybe expanding the lows a little bit. That's the way I'm looking at it, and, and that kind of corresponds. If you look at the QQQ, um, now let me just do this because I haven't done it. I was asked about it earlier on. I said I'd get to it. The semiconductor index pulling back today. I think the semis are now stuck in a range at 113.95. The break into the 116s is very good. I think it's probably going to test 111 before it can rally again. All right, I'll be back a little later with Tom. Have a wonderful day. Check out my opening call daily newsletter. Hope to see you tomorrow. Uh, Basil Chapman signing off, and I will be doing the news, the one o'clock news update, as soon as we get back. But otherwise, I will see you tomorrow.